You're listening to Law and Gospel on this Wednesday, April the 3rd, in the year of our Lord 2024. I'm Pastor Tom Baker. Now, a lot of times we like looking at the readings for the following Sunday, which is the second Sunday of Easter on this April the 7th. They were from Acts chapter 4, 1 John chapter 1, and John chapter 20. But each time there is also a psalm. Now, during the Easter season, there's not an Old Testament reading replaced with a reading from the book of Acts. But the psalm is Psalm 148. So we want to take a look at this psalm, Psalm 148, to see what it has to say about this Sunday. It begins with, praise the Lord. Now, how do we praise the Lord? Or how does praise the Lord take place? It says, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise him in the heights. Now, as soon as you hear that, what are we talking about? Well, scripture interprets scripture. And so you take a look at the verses surrounding that particular verse to see what it means to praise the Lord from the heavens. And verse 2 tells us, praise him, all his angels, praise him, all his hosts. Now, what does it mean in this particular passage to exalt, extol, and praise God? Exalt means to raise high, while extol means to praise highly. The psalmist would have you praise high the mighty deeds of God by highly praising him. Praise includes thanksgiving and speaking to others about the great things God and Christ has done for us and for our salvation. This is why a lot of worship services begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. What is that reminding us of? It's reminding us of what God did in our baptism, brought us into a right relationship with him. For in baptism, you not only receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, you also receive the gift of the forgiveness of sins. That's a wonderful, wonderful blessing from God. Now, Psalm 148 is interesting as to how God is praised. It says, praise him in verse 3, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Now, I recently saw a item on the internet, and it was talking about not the billions of stars that are in the universe, but the billions of galaxies filled with stars. And that's only been discovered recently because of a telescope that scientists had sent up into the universe. And we now see stars that are very, very far away. Now, the problem with the video was that 
they assumed that all the stars had light and that the light traveled at uh, 186,000 miles per second. And so they figured it took thousands of years for the light from the furthest star to reach the earth. Well, that's ridiculous. When God created the world, Adam and Eve could look up into the sky and see all the stars. The light already was reaching the earth. It's kind of like the earth was created with age. Remember? They were told not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there had to be a tree there. Now, you know how long it takes for a tree to grow from a seed and through this nonsense called evolution, it could take hundreds and hundreds of years. And therefore, the world is millions and millions of years old because it has diamonds in the earth. Now, you know how a diamond occurs. It comes from fossilized wood that is under pressure for a long, long time in the earth and becomes a diamond. That's how it naturally occurs. But when God created the world, the diamonds were already there. They were part of God's creation, as was probably the oil that was in the earth and the mountains and the volcanoes. Yeah, it's really ridiculous looking at the internet where they try to guess the age of the earth because of the natural growth of what they consider to be volcanoes and other items. And there is really no evidence that evolution is correct. We believe that on the very eighth day of creation, if a doctor had entered into the Garden of Eden and saw Adam and Eve, he would not jump to the conclusion that they were only two days old. They would be little, 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 little babies. No, they were walking around and they were able to have children. So Adam and Eve were also created with what we would consider to be age, even though they were only a few days old, but they would look anywhere from what, 18 years old to 24 years old, we're not really sure, but that's how old they were. So, this Psalm 148 says, when you see the sun, you see the moon, and all the shining stars, you praise him. You praise him because he is the one who created these items. Praise him you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. So what this psalm is doing is taking a look at creation. And it is obvious from creation and looking at the world that all of these things came about by the voice of God. Let there be light, there was light. Let there be sun and moon and shining stars, and they appeared very early in the creation. Praise him, you highest heavens, and you waters above the heavens. Now there the word heaven doesn't necessarily mean the place you and I are going to after we die, but refers to the sky, the universe. And we can look way up in the heavens 
and not realize that there are waters above the heavens. Well, that became really true during the time of the flood. So, this is wonderful, this Psalm 148. Praising the sun, the moon, all the shining stars, and the waters above the heavens. Continuing with verse 5 of Psalm 148. Let them praise the name of the Lord for, and now it gives the reason why we're praising the name of the Lord. For he commanded and they were created. Do you hear that? Verse 5 of Psalm 148 shows why evolution is not possible. Because these things were not created over time. They were created by the command of God. And if you look back in Genesis, what was the first command? It was by Jesus Christ, verse 3. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. Verse 6. And he established them forever and ever. He gave a decree, and it shall not pass away. So, even after the day of judgment, there will be wonderful, wonderful establishment of a world. We're not sure what heaven is going to be like but it will be a new earth and a new heaven, and we will rejoice in it. Verse 7, Praise the Lord from the heavens and from the earth, you great sea creatures and all deeps. So there is much in the sea that has not yet been discovered. And that is really interesting. There are sea creatures. For example, we know of one that perhaps we had not yet discovered. And that was when Jonah was swallowed by a great sea creature. Now, it could have been a whale, but not necessarily. It could have been one from the deep that God had already created and brought up to swallow Jonah until he was spit up on the ground and then obeyed the Lord and went to Nineveh. And he praised the Lord because through the sea creature, he was able to share the message of God with Nineveh. Now, he wasn't very happy in sharing that message because he did not like the Ninevites. They were Gentiles, and they were enemies of Israel. But through the message of Jonah, a number of them came to faith. And so that's why we praise even sea creatures and all the deeps. Verse 8. We praise fire and hail, snow and mist, stormy wind, fulfilling his words. When did the wind fulfill the words of Jesus? Well, it began at the beginning of creation. When the wind coupled with the Holy Spirit, was upon the face of the earth and divided the land from the waters. That's when continents were formed. And how were these continents, 
how did they exist? Well, God used fire and hail, snow and mist. These were ways in which the earth was replenished with nutrients. And so the Old Testament talks a lot about the rain and the snow and the mist that had to come about. For four years, when we were traveling to a congregation in, well, it was central northern Illinois, we often went by a lot of great orchards and places where corn was being grown and also beans. Now, a lot of times it wasn't raining, but many a time there was a fog over the land, which is mist, and it watered the ground so that the crops could grow. Verse 10, talking about farmers, then also what is praising God are beasts and all livestock, creeping things and flying birds. You know, there are actually people who are looking for certain kinds of birds. They're very rare. And they will maybe fly to an area of the country where the bird is supposed to be located, take their cameras and attempt to get photos of that bird. Now, why are they doing that? Because they are praising God for even flying birds. And of course, farmers praise God for livestock because that brings food to the nations. Verse 11, kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and maidens together, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. Now here, I believe the Psalm is revealing what's happening in many congregations. And in those congregations, you have kings worshiping, princes, rulers of the earth, young men, men and maidens, and old men, and children, and they're singing praises to God. Remember, to exalt God means to praise him and praise him by sharing with others the thanksgiving we have about the great things God in Christ has done for us and for our salvation. So let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heaven. What does that mean? The majesty of God refers to his powers, his abilities. He's omniscient knows everything. He's omnipresent. That means he is everywhere. And he is almighty, which means a lot of people don't understand that. For God to be almighty means there is no power or might that does not come from him. Now, Individual people wake up in the morning 
and they're able to get up out of their bed and stand up. How can they do that? They're doing it by the power of God. We thank God for the ability to stand and walk because you can go to a hospital and find people who are unable to do that because of an illness or an accident. And yet they too can be healed in time. And that time may mean eternity in heaven where they will be healed fully from all of their problems. They will not be weak. They will not be sick. They will not be sinners. That's always amazed me. How are we going to be able to be human beings and yet not sin by not only word and deed, but also by thought? That we would not sin by those? That's really amazing. For us not to be able to sin even by thought means that when we get to heaven, we will have a new body. We will have a new spirit. And that spirit will be the one that we receive at our baptism. So verse 13 says, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name alone is exalted. His majesty is above earth and heavens. Yes, his almighty power is behind all things that move. And, and therefore God is omnipresent. Adam and Eve found that out. When they sinned, they attempted to hide from God. Where did they go? They went into a large bush where God was. He's everywhere. Verse 14 is really important. We're taking a look at Psalm 148, which is the psalm for the second Sunday of Easter. He has raised up a horn for his people. Now, what does that mean? Well, the horn is referring to none other than Jesus Christ. Remember the shuns of Jesus, humiliation, crucifixion, resurrection, and exaltation. That's the life, the sufferings, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus and his ascension into heaven. And who has raised him up? It's God the Father. And Jesus is a horn for his people. Now, who are his people? Again, scripture interprets scripture. Praise for all his saints. Now, his people are considered to be saints. This does not involve every person in the world because every person is not a saint. You are a saint when through faith you believe the promises connected to Jesus Christ. And those promises are found throughout the life of Jesus Christ. In fact, throughout his pre-life, in the Old Testament, Jesus speaks many promises to Adam and Eve about the coming of a Savior, to Abraham, that through Isaac, that line would continue, to other prophets, like Isaiah, that the Savior, that he would suffer the punishment that should have been ours for our sins. The Lord laid on him 
the iniquity of us all. And he paid for our sins. That's what it means. That God the Father has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his saints. And who are those people? For the people of Israel who are near to him. That's found in the book of Romans, where the new Israel are the people of God, the saints of God. So we have in Psalm 148, a praising of the name of the Lord, not only by the many parts of creation, but also of salvation. Because the greatest way to praise the Lord is thank him for the horn that's spoken of in verse 14. The horn that represents Jesus Christ. Praise for all his saints. That's what we do in a worship service weekly. And we give thanks to God that we are the sons and daughters of the King as the hymn for that Sunday talks about. I'm Tom Baker. Join us tomorrow for more on Law and Gospel. Until then, God bless you. Listen to Law and Gospel each weekday morning at 9.30 on KFUO. For a tax-deductible gift to Law and Gospel, please make your check out to Law and Gospel and mail to Law and Gospel P.O. Box 28910, St. Louis, Missouri, 63132, or call toll-free 1-877-267-1962. Views and opinions expressed on Worldwide KFUO may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. If you'd like to comment on programs or topics heard on Worldwide KFUO, write us at KFUO, 1333 South Kirkwood Road, St. Louis, Missouri, 63122. You can also leave a question or comment on our comment line at 314-996-1542. We are the messenger of good news, Worldwide KFUO.